Hello, how's it going? My name's Alan and I'm making a tactics game. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Real Life Walk has just been getting in the way and Elden Ring came out and months of my life disappeared. But I'm back now and the last thing I did was a toy series in February and I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of you guys who give me such nice feedback. I know a lot of you are new here from that tutorial series and I'm just really grateful for it. Um, I was really nervous making it uh, because I wanted it to be good and I wanted to be able to help you because so many people are asking for it. Uh, and I'm just glad it worked out and I'm glad I was able to, a lot of you guys were able to find it useful. So anyway, let's jump into the video. Let's talk about AI. So you want to do AI for an SRPG, where do you start? Well, Google. That and some of you clever people told me about state machines. So what is a state machine? Well, the state machine is a behavior model that contains a list of states. And a state is an object that has a condition and a behavior. A condition is kind of this list of criteria that have to be met for the associated behavior to then take place. Uh, a great example of this I found all around the place was a patrolling enemy. So on a technical level, I want you to imagine your patrolling enemy moving around its square or whatever it is, and then you sneak up on him like a player and you get into his range of view. Then, once you have become in the range of view, a signal gets sent to the state machine that the criteria has been met and it will switch modes to chase mode and it will start chasing after you and fighting you or whatever it is that the, it does in that game. But that's basically what a state machine is in, in like a very simple example. But here's the thing, I'm making a turn-based strategy game. So the example I just gave doesn't really make sense because the state of a character in my game is basically it's it's torn or it isn't it's torn. But I was just thinking about it in the wrong way. So I, I, I dismissed state machines straight away from the very beginning because I didn't think it was for this type of game, but I was just thinking about it in the wrong way. So instead of a state machine, what I actually need is something called a behavior selector. It's something I came up with myself. And what it is, is basically you take a screenshot or like a snap of the current state of the level. So, you know, where all the characters are positioned, their health, the general state of the level, maybe if you have, if whatever, whatever the enemy needs to know, you, you get all the information, you give it to it. And the behavior selector will take that information and choose a reasonable way to act during its turn. So for example, if your enemy was close to death and surrounded by all of the player characters, it should try to heal or run away or something like that. Or if a player character is close to death, maybe it should act very aggressively and try to finish the job. And that is really actually only one half of the puzzle. What do you do once you figure out the behavior you guys want to do? How do you actually do the optimal action based on its behavior? That's something I called the value calculator. So when I was looking around looking for ideas on how to do this stuff, I found a GDC talk about the game XCOM and they were talking about how they program their AI. And what they do is they calculate every possible action a character can do or the enemy can do and then it returns a scenario value based on all those actions and the best value is the action that the character will do. And I know you're probably wondering what the hell am I talking about? So why don't I take you on over to a Sprite and we'll do a little demo on what I'm talking about. So here we are on a little imaginary board with a player character and an enemy character. And we're gonna try and give you a visual example of what exactly is going on on a technical level. I'm gonna do it this way just because I will show some code in a minute, but I'm just gonna do it this way first because it can be pretty overwhelming. There's a lot going on. So I want to try and simplify it as much as possible. And also for people who aren't using Unity, this might be helpful as well. So at the very beginning, what we do with our player character is we, or with our enemy character, we want to figure out where we want to move to. So we got to get all of the possible tiles our character can move to. So something like this. So our character can move in three spaces in any direction. And now we want to loop through each of these squares and figure out all of the possible actions we can do within these squares. So let's start from here. We are imagining what's going to happen if our character moves here and what can he possibly do. So we have to, now we're gonna loop through all of the actions he can take. So all of his, so his, his attack and any abilities he can do. So next we would get all of the possible tiles he can attack. Something like this, and then we check all of these tiles if there is a enemy within the tiles. If there's a if there's a character, a targetable character within the tiles. Um, right now there's not, so we would move on to the next step, which is checking abilities. And let's just say we have a longer ranged ability. 
something like this. And now we actually see, oh, play our character within the circle. And now our character will know that we can do some damage. And this is probably going to be the best possible scenario for this square. So we would calculate it based on, uh, for my archer character in particular, we're going to do distance from the player because we want we want the archer to remain as far away as possible while doing the most possible damage. So we can do six plus, and let's just say this ability in particular does like 10 damage, right? But, so this scenario value is 16, right? And let's mix it up a little bit more just for this example. So let's, if I move... If I grab our guy here and let's move him closer, so he's right up, he's right up against our archer. So now our archer uh, can use is in his ability range and his attack range. But let's say the ability, the attack damage because it's shorter range is something like twelve, right? So we want to do a basic attack to our cat to our player, but we are only two uh, steps away, so it's only two distance away. So that's going to be 14 of a scenario value. While our character has a four attack range. So actually, so actually, if we move our character back one, this is the most optimal one because now we have a distance of three plus 12, uh, which gives us a value of 15. So this is the best scenario that we can do against our, our dude. Or maybe not because, because of our ability, we can actually move back further and attack him with the our ability again. So, so it would actually still be six plus ten equals sixteen. You, but then I could maybe add in a minus. So maybe the mana cost is a negative as well. So maybe it's going to be six plus whatever ten minus whatever the mana cost is, or the cooldown is, or something. You know. So you know two, and then it's fourteen. Uh, you know, these are just the type of things that you got to think about that goes through my head when I'm looking at this. This got way busier than I was expecting it to. But that's why I wanted to do it this way instead of just jumping into code because it is complicated and there's a lot going on. But I hope I hope this was good enough. Yeah, comment below if it was good enough because I know I know this is this is a lot. Um, this is a bit of a mess. But yeah, that that is basically what happens. It's a bunch of four loops. So first we loop through all of our possible tiles we can move in. Um, and then we loop through all of our possible actions and we come up with these scenario values and we just kind of compare them all, all the time and we just find the best possible scenario. As promised, here we are in Visual Studio Code. Um, I've tried to record this a few times and I can't do it without it being just boring as fuck. So we're going to just show you the important things and not everything. Look, whatever it is, whatever you're going to do, it's going to be unique to your game. So my code isn't actually even going to be that useful. So that's why I'm not going to step through it too much, but I'm just going to show you how I'm calculating the scenario value in one of the situations. And yeah, and then hopefully that, that'll give me that's good enough. So what is a scenario? Scenario value. So we have our scenario value. We have a target ability. So if I'm going to attack, if I'm going to cast an ability, this is the ability we're going to cast. Target tile, where we're going to cast the ability or who we're going to attack. Um, position tile, that's where we're going to move to. And then if it's an auto attack or not. I realize I say auto attack for everything, even though it's more like just a basic attack. I say auto attack because I play League too much. And that's just what's in my head. In our enemy controller, we have this kind of massive file. And what we care about is our calculate best scenario. So when we are wanting to calculate our best scenario, there's a bunch of stuff we got to do. We want to get all the tiles in a movement range, like I said. We're going to loop through them and we're going to create our scenario value, our best scenario value for that tile. Uh, we're going to set it if it's not set yet, or if it's, if it's greater than the other one. And if it's equal to, we're going to use the path count and we're going to use the one that's the closest path, the closest as the, as the action we're going to take. In our then, our, our, our strategic auto attack target, so this is just based on our personality for this, for this move, uh, we are going to attack the closest death character while keeping the maximum distance. So like I said in our little A sprite vision, we have our scenario value here, and that is going to be the attack we deal, um, the, the plus the closest distance, so basically the furthest, the further away, and then minus the character's health to guarantee uh, this is actually the lowest character that we're targeting. Because in another tile, we might be able to target a different character with more health. So this just guarantees that. Um, and if 
the character is going to die, we basically give this scenario value a big boost of like 10,000. So the guarantee that this is what we're going to do. And that's all I really wanted to show you is because everything else is kind of just super unique to the stuff that I've already done. And it's not going to make a ton of sense. So yeah, so that's it. Let's, uh, let's, let's look at some gameplay finally. Here we are in a little custom demo, custom level that I've been using to kind of test all this stuff with lots of different obstacles and that we have to get these guys to walk around. So let's just jump into it. Let's fight these guys. Let's see how, how we get on. So I'm going to move this guy back a bit up here. And I'm going to start moving closer to us. I'm still going to, I'm going to keep my distance just to see that their pathfinding is correct. They're coming in at us. Boom. This guy has a fireball attack, so that's what you just saw there. This guy, this guy was able to get in range and use a fireball and hit more than one of us, so that's what he just did. Uh, because we are on a heist, oh, and this guy's blocking, we're after completely blocking ourselves off, so that's not a great position for us to be in. Uh, let's get down here, so we can actually get in a situation where we can attack. Right. And now, I think our mage is going to be able to do something here. So let's use abilities, let's use fireball. I think we can get bored and more. No, we can't. We can only get one. So let's get the archer in this situation. Oh, mage just got us there again. We're going to send him to try and get the mage. Uh, he was not in our attack range, so let's come in. Let's target. Let's try and get this archer as well. I think we're in a good spot here because we are. We have them separated, so we can kill this archer quick. The archers do the most damage. Archer didn't move, he just decided to attack this guy. Uh, let's just move you here, let's do an attack. I'm only going to use the fireball ability because that's all they have, I'm pretty sure. Mage decided to fireball my guy. Let's or just auto attack my guy because his, his fireball is still on cooldown. So let's get up here and get into the fight here and let's kill this, start killing this mage. Oh, and he was able to do a fireball attack there. In that situation, I think his auto attack does more damage, but the, the mage was closer to death, so he was so he decided to attack the mage instead. Um, we are still in a pretty optimal. These guys have the same movement range, so this isn't actually that that entertaining. I'm going to move him closer in to see our guy. He should run away a little bit. Yeah, so he ran away and did the attack on us. Let's move in closer. I think we're about to kill this guy. Do I have the fireball ready? I do. Let's go. Boom. Get wrecked. So, Archer's dead. We're going to win this now. Oh, he almost got my Archer. Let's try to finish off this mage next. Let's... That's... Boom. We're going to get the mage now. Our guy can't fireball yet. And he finishes my arch off. But it's okay, we can finish him off. Not yet, not yet. We're almost there. Oh, and he fireballed my mage. Oh, our mage can't move because of our death. That's that's a bug. <laughs> that's a bug. But it's okay. And now we got him. Dead. Okay, and now all we have left is this guy to deal with. Boom. He's gonna attack me back. We gotta get our mage in range to get into this fight. And if he's not in range, I can't use fireball, I gotta end. But you can fight, so let's attack you. He's just going to keep attacking me, it's great. Um, just as a test, I think we're going to move our mage into dead range, so we can actually... Our mage is doing absolutely zero damage. We might not win this. Oh, it's okay, our mage is going. Do I have fireball? I do have fireball. Um, let's get rid of you. And... Kill you. Alright, mage is dead. Now we're just... It's just... These guys are equal, so dead. Boo! I won. <laughs> I won almost. I almost lost. So it's cool. Even though this is very simple and basic AI, there is a little bit of challenge there, and you got you got to be careful um, with two identical teams. Uh, they had one extra fireball caster, so that was one thing. But other than that, you know, it was actually, you know, a little bit tricky. So yeah, I'm happy enough with this. This like so this. It's going to be unique to your ability, to your game. Um, it always will be. So, th so there's not really a, like a, a, a full-on tutorial possible that will 
be covered for what you want to make. It's going to have to be something. This, but I think this is a good starting point for me, at least. Um, but yeah, that's 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 the game. And that is everything I wanted to cover today. So thank you so. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I, I imagine I lost quite a few people during that code display because it's just a lot and it goes through a lot. But I'm glad. I'm glad. And um, if you are still here, I'm very grateful and thank you so much. Do comment below and um, what you think of the video and because i'm always trying to get better with this type of stuff so i do need i do need good feedback and yeah what's next um so everything you just saw the entire project is going to go to the unity asset store eventually that's the plan this is all going to be up on the unity asset store but and at the moment right now i think um it is pretty much feature complete with missing maybe a few small things but it's feature complete so it's going up soon but because i've kind of just been figuring this stuff out i would not call it production ready so i need to remake everything pretty much um in a nicer cleaner way so so if somebody is nice enough to buy it and wants to use it then it needs to be readable for them but if i'm redoing it already that means that i need to i can do some tutorials again because you guys like the last tutorial so much this why not make more tutorials if i'm going to be remaking it anyway so yeah so make sure to comment as well what tutorials you want to see and i'm going to start making tutorials while i'm remaking this stuff and yeah i'm just trying to be helpful trying to be good i don't think i'm going to do it as big as that pathfinding tutorial because that was huge it genuinely took me the full two months to get that done and um, even though it was like pretty high quality in the end but, but yeah just you know thank you guys so much for all this positive feedback we're at 800 subscribers that's almost doubled since the last time i did a video uh, and I'm just like the, the, seeing this go up even though I'm not posting is just it's a, kind of a head fuck honestly because it feels like I'm not doing enough but it's just it's just cool it's cool to see by the time I make another video maybe I'll be at a thousand subscribers maybe maybe hopefully uh, fingers crossed but yeah uh, yeah I'm just rambling thank you so much again and I will see you next time cheers bye